Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we're going to be figuring out what happened to the German family and man that saved Arthur Morgan's life in Red Dead Redemption 2. So I actually thought I had solved this mystery a couple of months ago, but it turns out there's an even deeper story here. On the Red Dead Mystery subreddit, a user Pink Floyd Panzer pointed out that the man from the German family that you save in RDR2 and that then turns around and saves Arthur's life later on in Chapter 6 can be found and is featured in a mission in the first Red Dead Redemption game, which we know takes place in 1911 through 1914 and we meet the German family in 1899. So in case you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, in chapter two, Andreas and his family's camp were attacked by outlaw, and he was kidnapped by some of the outlaws for ransom, and he was actually saved by Arthur and Charles. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. You can come out of there. You okay? You don't mean no harm. He said, are you okay? Sprechen Sie Deutsch? German? No. Now go on. Get out of here. Go. We need the land. Go. Get the hell out of they here. They took our father. Who did? Men. Last night. Where? Where did they take him? It ain't no business of ours. I don't even speak their language. You ain't as tough and dense as all that. Come on, Arthur. Come on, I'll take you back to your family. Also, soll ich mitkommen? Wo bringen Sie mich hin? What the hell did you do to those fellers? Wie bitte? Those men back there, why did they take you? Geld, money. Meiner Familie gehört eine Goldmine. Sie wollen Lösegeld erpressen. It, how did someone even come up with them words? Sie bringen mich zu meiner Familie? Vielen Dank. Wie haben Sie sie gefunden? Look, I'm sorry, friend. I can barely speak English. There they are. Dem Herrgott sei Dank. Schatz! Oh. Andreas! Oh. Andreas! Ich hab gedacht, du seist tot! Beinahe wärst du gewesen. Meine Lieblinge. Meine Herz allerliebst. Oh, wie wunderbar. Oh. Sie sind ein großer Mann. Ja. Ein großer Mann. Ja, wirklich. Es ist ein Segen, dass Thanks. wir sie getroffen haben. Come on, now get out of here. This place ain't safe. Get out of here! Ja, ja, Ramos. alles klar. Ramos. Uh, ich hab was für Sie. Einen Moment. Uh, um, Dankeschön. Thank you. Vielen Dank, herzlichen Dank. Guess it was a pleasure. Ja! Yeah. Now, as you guys saw there, when he was brought back to his family, he thanks them for saving him, and he gives Arthur a gold bar as a token of appreciation for saving him. And Arthur tells Andreas to get going, and he leaves with his family. Now, it wasn't specifically implied, but Andreas is a German immigrant that has come to America with his family, and he comes from a wealthy family that owns a gold mining business. That is going to be important. Now, later on in the story, Arthur actually gets mortally wounded when he's taking eagle flies back to the Wapiti Reservation. And as he leaves, uh, Arthur has one of his, like, tuberculosis fits, and basically this happens. Rest a minute. 
Warum? Wenn ich besser Englisch kann. Sie haben uns gerettet, als wir wirklich Hilfe brauchten. Und jetzt können wir sie nicht retten. Aber, aber... So as you guys saw there, before waking up in Annisburg, Arthur sees the vague figures of Andreas and his wife, and he hears their voices. Now, it's unclear whether this was in fact or whether this was just another hallucination caused by the progressive disease, but it looks like Andreas and his family had moved somewhere close to Annisburg, which makes sense because it's a mining town, and they had actually saved Arthur's life. So the story sort of goes full circle. And Arthur saves them. He saves Arthur. Early on in chapter two, I just thought he was sort of a non-consequential character and your reward for saving him was a gold bar. But it turns out your reward for saving him was him literally keeping you alive, at least for a little bit longer. Well, it turns out that there's someone awfully similar to him in Red Dead Redemption. And that is Andreas Muller. Now, the Andreas in Red Dead Redemption 2 doesn't have a last name, but there are some striking similarities here, and I believe they're the same person, and his fate is finally revealed. So, Muller was born in Nuremberg, Germany in 1868, and sometime before 1911, he came to Mexico to prospect for silver, and by 1911, he was residing in Chuparosa. So can you see the similarities there? The Andreas from Red Dead Redemption 2 is a gold miner, and the uh, Andreas that we see in Red Dead Redemption 1 is a silver miner in Mexico. Now here's where things start to get interesting, because in Red Dead Redemption 1, the Andreas we meet is a volatile man with a very short fuse who seems to have a strong dislike for any one American. And he's also a keen poker player. That doesn't seem like the Andreas we met in Red Dead Redemption 2. However, John Marston actually meets him in 1911 when he joins in a poker game with Landon Ricketts, uh, Melano Santander, and The Stranger at a saloon in Chuparosa. I fold. No tengo nada. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Marston. How you keeping, sir? Just fine, thank you. And you? Oh, very well, sir. Thank God my wife died. Unlucky in love, lucky in cards. Garzon, champagne for everyone. Keep playing, Mr. Ricketts. Oh, I'm sorry, Herr Muller. I'll keep playing you in servitude for the rest of your life on Earth, if that makes you happy. Yes, I shall indeed, sir. Well, then, your deal. <laughs> Oh, Marston, would you like to join us? I don't think so. I'm just going to have a drink. Oh, come on. Sit down. Sit down. Okay, then. Gentlemen. Hey. Namakshon! You fucking cheat! Excuse me? You fucking looked in my fucking carts, you fucking cheat! Now, Herr Muller. Let's calm down. There must be some mistake. There's no mistake. Your Yankee friend here is a fucking cheat. Easy there, Germany. Calm yourself down. Oh, yeah. You know exactly what you did. Yeah, I know exactly what I did, friend, which was nothing. Now, I'd prefer it if we could all play a friendly game and no one get hurt. You, you planted this guy, Ricketts. Now, why would I do that? I've already beaten you. Now, calm down and let's finish the game. There's no, no more cards game. Ease up there, friend. There must be a name for this. An impasse, sir. An impasse. We could all die here and now. I'm not fighting you, Ricketts, but the Yankee him I don't like. He's done you no harm, Muller. He's done me no good either. 
Outside, winner takes the pot. The winner will take what he wants. The other man will be in no position to argue. Sanchez will be my second. As you wish, Germany. As you wish. So as you guys saw there, after a few rounds, Muller starts making comments suggesting that John and Ricketts are colluding. John glances over at Muller and then looks down at his own cards. Upon seeing this, the German accuses John of looking at his cards, calling him an effing cheat, which John denies. And the situation escalates and the players all draw their guns on each other and a duel is decided. And then, of course, this is what happens. Nobody steals from me, especially an American. <laughs> Old Muller always did play his cards too early. Come on, we've earned ourselves a drink. I think Mr. Muller's buying. So if that is the same Andreas from Red Dead Redemption 2, we know what happens. John Marston actually kills him. He shoots him dead and he takes all of his winnings. Now, there's a couple of things that make me think this is not the same Andreas. Number one is his personality. Like, how do you go from such a loving, caring person who... By the way, barely speaks a lick of English in Red Dead Redemption 2 to being a volatile man with a very short fuse who actually speaks pretty good English. Now, I can understand that a lot can potentially change. Remember, in Red Dead Redemption 2, we meet Andreas in 1899. We actually meet him in Red Dead Redemption in 1911. So essentially, 12 years had passed. That's a long time to lose your hair, apparently. That's also a long time to learn a new language, which he tends to speak pretty well. And it's also a long time in order to completely change your personality. Now, the big question here is, where is the rest of his family? And that might actually be the reason why he is so off-putting and so hostile. Maybe something happened with his family and now he is all alone. So he has no one to share the spoils of his previous gold mining venture and now mines for silver and plays poker for fun. So even though there seems to be some personality differences, I believe that this is the same Andreas from Red Dead Redemption 2. I mean, how many German immigrants are there in Mexico that have the same name and also have the same uh, profession? Being like a gold and silver miner and prospector, like that seems like too much of a coincidence for these guys to be a completely different person. And if that is the case where they are the same person, we know what happened to the guy that saved Arthur Morgan. He ended up getting killed in a duel by John Marston. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. Do you think this is the same Andreas from Red Dead Redemption 2? And what do you think of the outcome that happened to this guy? Let me know your thoughts, opinions, and more in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. If you guys did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And be sure to subscribe if you guys are new. You want to stay up to date on all the latest Red Dead Redemption 2 and GTA videos that I'm doing here on my channel. And be sure to ring that notification bell as well. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't work. And if you ring that bell, you'll always be guaranteed to be notified when new videos arrive. But of course, as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.